Hello all and welcome. My name is Wayne Hoggett and I'm joining you from my home office in Brisbane, Australia. I'm an Azure Training Architect at Acloud Guru. I'm a big fan of automation and DevOps, lover of PowerShell and all things Microsoft. I'm almost old enough to say that I've been in the IT industry for 20 years. Not quite though. Today I want to talk to you about creating a DevOps culture in an infrastructure team. To make this real, I want to share my perspective as to how I achieved this with all of the ups and downs. I'll share some significant wins, but also what I think was my biggest failure in this journey. To begin, I want to take you back, back to mid-2018. I was unhappy and frustrated. I'd started looking for a new role, and for this role, I was looking for companies embracing DevOps. I wanted to be involved in a team that was collaborative, forward-leaning, and did things as code. Maybe that's not DevOps to everyone, but it was to me at the time, and I was ready to embrace that mindset. I was done with the old way of working, constantly fighting fires due to misconfiguration and human error in procedures. But more than that, I was done with people treating other people badly. And to be honest, I hadn't seen this a lot in my career, but what I had seen was enough. I applied for and received an offer to join a new DevOps team located interstate. They were doing amazing things. They also offered to double my salary. You know the story. Before I joined, I asked to meet the entire team. The hiring manager said that it was an odd request, but arranged a meeting anyway. Later that week, I had a video call with the entire team. I didn't realize at the time, but this was a culture test, and I was testing them, not the other way around. I watched as the hiring manager frantically ran around, getting everyone on camera. I saw some of the attitudes from the team and from the hiring manager. It was madness. This wasn't for me. Around the same time, I sat down with my current manager. I get the feeling he had an idea of what was going on. He let me know that he had a plan to reorganize the IT management team, creating a new team focused on automation and DevOps. He asked me if I wanted to be part of the selection and hiring process for the role. Are you kidding me? I wanted to lead that team. He probably knew that and was just trying to gauge my interest. This was my chance. There was massive potential. Hundreds of servers needed managing and automation was everywhere. Not just IT processes, but PowerShell was the glue, dealing with any gaps in both IT and businesses processes. DevOps is often represented by an infinity symbol with a bunch of processes and tools. I personally think this is a bit of a limited view of DevOps. As we started our DevOps journey, I quickly learned that DevOps is not about tools. It's about people, culture, processes, and the tools that enable those processes. It's much less about the tools than it is about the other three. It was never going to work without the right mix of the first three. As I take you through our journey, I will map out how and what we tackled and in what order it was, and I'll cover the tools we used to achieve it. First up, I wanna talk a little more about the type of team I wanted to build, what sort of people I needed, and what sort of culture I wanted to foster. I set myself two main objectives for this new team. Be very good at automation and embrace DevOps. When I took over the team, I already had two excellent infrastructure engineers on the new team. I'd been involved in the hiring process. They were strong in automation, but more importantly, they were team players. My focus on culture had a few main components. Hiring and promoting was based on culture. We didn't reward bad behavior. We also focused on encouraging people to admit when they'd made a mistake and allow them time to fix the mistake and get the assistance they need to fix it. We all make mistakes. There was no shaming or blaming. Everyone was responsible for the team's success. There were also times when we had to address negative behavior. Good people have bad days. Sometimes they just need a little space. Other times they need a chat or some help. Either way, 
Culture wasn't something that just happened. We had to work on it every day. We also encouraged to focus on the success of the team over the success of the individual. We had a team of great individuals, but together they would deliver much better results than anyone could do on their own. We allowed opportunities to learn and encourage people to work with people they might learn from. Everyone can learn from someone else. Sometimes it's little things, and sometimes it's huge. I aim to keep the team a little bit stretched, not too much to, so that they would break, though sometimes we did get stretched too far. But when someone has been stretched, I always tried to give them something a little less challenging for their next task. This was all done on a best effort basis. Sometimes you need to get things done and you don't get this luxury. Another focus was on communication and collaboration. We encourage the asking of questions. No question is a stupid question. Not asking the question when it could have improved the solution or you could have learned something was easily the less smart thing to do. We also encourage the team to seek feedback on their ideas and consider the feedback. Ask people to challenge your idea, concept, design, whatever it might be. The global pandemic also had an impact on communication. We found ourselves working partially or completely remotely. It made collaboration a little more challenging. We had some people in the office and some remote and other days we had everyone working remote. It was fairly random. To help with collaboration, we made a chat room in Microsoft Teams, a drop in drop out room where you could come and ask some questions and seek feedback or deal with blockers. But you could also drop out when you needed to focus. And if you really needed some input from someone in the team, you could dial them in to remove a blocker. Let's talk hiring. We were focused on two main attributes when seeking a new team member. They had to be willing to give DevOps a go, skills were a bonus, and they had to have the right cultural fit. And what do I mean by cultural fit? They had to be open to giving and receiving feedback. They had to want to have their say, but also listen to others when they did the same. They had to have the drive to always be learning. And I don't mean training here. I mean all types of learning, informal and formal. Now, we got this wrong a few times. A few team members we hired quickly left. Some didn't have that collaborative mindset and others didn't believe that automation and DevOps was even a good idea. Our hiring process involved some skills-based tests in the areas we cared about, but it also included a bunch of questions about giving and receiving feedback and sharing ideas. The skills were definitely less important. With the right mindset, you could quickly pick up the skills. We only really needed a moderate skills baseline. No ninja rock stars were necessary. Eventually we got the right team, a team built around culture and mindset first. Some team members had all the required skills at this time and others needed to develop those skills, but skill development wasn't going to be a problem. We had built a team that was collaborative and supportive, and when someone asked for help, they got it. So as we map out the journey, you can see that fostering culture is something that never really stops. It will run the entire length of your journey alongside everything else. Let's talk task management. This is another very important component of a successful DevOps team, and the culture of the team works hand in hand with the way tasks are completed. We, like most teams, had two problems. Too much work was coming through, we couldn't complete it all, not even half of it, and everyone wondered what we actually did all day. Hilarious, right? We've all been there. We also had another problem. The global pandemic meant that the goalposts were moving even more often than ever before, and delivery timelines were shorter than ever. We needed to better track our tasks, improve reporting, transparency and visibility. We went through a few different task management tools for managing our tasks. 
and I thank the team for bearing with me as we went through it. We ended up trying three different task management tools. I think there is no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to task management and tracking. We eventually adopted a Kanban board using Azure DevOps. It allowed us to focus on getting stuff done. It made us accountable for our individual tasks and team tasks. It was excellent for transparency and reporting. Anyone could see what we were working on and what was blocking us and how far through delivering on a business requirement we were. We started each task on our board with a business requirement and then we fleshed it out as time went on. When it came time to assign the work, we collaborated as a team on what we might think needs to be done to achieve the objective and who else might need to be involved. A business requirement might come through that needs network, security, scripting, infrastructure and more. So the required steps were drafted and the work was assigned. Once it got done and the team agreed it was completed, we moved it to the completed section on our board. It's a fairly simple process at its core. Record what needs to be done, who is doing it, and then any blockers as they come up. We ran through the board every morning for about 15 minutes, sometimes longer if we needed time to deal with any blockers. At the daily meetings, we talked about work in progress, and then a weekly meeting was discussed, and all of the work that had been completed for the week was talked about. The Kanban board worked really well. It helped us focus on getting work done when there was way too much work to do, but it also allowed us to help each other out when we were required to drive tasks to completion. And it was flexible enough to allow us to shift priorities whenever business priorities changed. If we take a look back at our journey, task management is something that we started fairly early on, but continually evolved. So it's likely that task management will run alongside most of your journey as well. Now let's talk about some of the more IT specific processes. The first issue I wanted to address before I was even leading the team was source control and code review. We couldn't have scripts rolling into production with no quality control or easy rollback mechanism. Our Git source journey started like many with GitHub. We started with a basic main development branching strategy and later moved to a feature branching strategy. And this was a suggestion by one of the more experienced team members and it worked a treat. Now you like us might start simple and then move to something more advanced as your DevOps experience improves. Source control and code review are likely something that you will start early in your DevOps journey, like we did, as they enable many of the other DevOps processes. And this process will likely evolve and change as you adopt DevOps. Now let's discuss one of the big DevOps buzzwords, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Fairly early on, when the team was just getting started, we moved all of our source code from GitHub to Azure DevOps, and I demonstrated a CI CD pipeline to the team. It was basic, it was used to publish and schedule our scripts in Azure Automation. And when I say CI CD, there was no real integration component. It was just about delivering our approved code changes through to production in automated delivery. And I'll admit, we didn't do this very well at the time, but it was a huge step forward and it really started to feel like we were doing DevOps. We had created our first pipeline and centralized logging from all of our automation scripts. Continuous integration and continuous deployment are likely to soon follow source control and code review. Continuous integration and deployment might be implemented at the same time as you implement one or soon after one another. Now let's discuss monitoring another important component of DevOps. 
From the fairly early stages of the team, we had been improving the monitoring capabilities. Continuous delivery is good, but continuous delivery with continuous monitoring is much better. It's not enough to deploy something and be done with it. You need to own it throughout its life cycle. The team writes the code, supports the code, continuously updates the code. You don't hand it off to someone else when you're done. It's not their problem, it's your problem. I think this applies to software, scripts, and systems. Ownership throughout the life cycle of a system is important. You need to know how your solution is performing, so you can take action when you need to. This might mean rolling back a release, if you have something go wrong, or you might make just some adjustments. I think it's important to collect a lot more monitoring information than you intend to act on. But in my opinion, your alerts should be actionable. No one needs to be interrupted if there isn't something that needs their immediate attention. Some alerts can go into a ticketing system so you can look at them later. These things aren't time sensitive. And others need an immediate response. And these can be dropped into a Microsoft Teams messaging system or something similar. Monitoring is something that you should start fairly early on so you can build it into your solutions and processes, but you will likely evolve it as you work on your processes. Now let's talk configuration management. After we had some of the processes down with source control and some basic continuous delivery, I set a new rule. I was pretty good at making rules. Some were must-haves, but most were agreed on by the team. Every new server or resource we deployed was going to be done code first. This led us to throwing away our server build checklist and replacing it with configuration management. We had strong PowerShell skills in the team, so we started down the path of desired state configuration. We did an okay job at this at first, though through some improvements, and an eventual rewrite by one of the team members, we ended up with a powerful configuration management tool. There were times where manual configuration would have been faster, but we were relentless. We knew that configuring this code now would save us time down the track. Every new server built was done with DSC. There were some minor exceptions, but we only used manual configuration where code was impossible or so difficult that it was never going to be worth the effort. These were usually one-off, non-critical, or soon-to-be-replaced servers. Before we knew it, we had heaps of servers configured using code based on server roles, using modular configuration that made code reuse really easy. Our new servers reported compliance and self-healed by automatically remediating any configuration drift. This change started to build bandwidth in the team. We were suddenly spending less time firefighting and more time improving existing solutions or deploying new solutions. If you're aiming to tackle configuration management, and I suggest you do, if you have virtual machines in your environment, it's something you can tackle fairly early on, as the rewards of adopting it will help you accelerate your DevOps journey. Now let's talk about the end game, where all of the work building the team, culture and processes really starts to pay off. Just after we started doing configuration management, we started to tackle infrastructure as code. We were using a mixed AWS and Azure environment. We tried CloudFormation and Terraform, and we had good and somewhat mixed results with both. A business decision to move to Azure meant that we ended up ditching Terraform and CloudFormation and started down the ARM templates path. Now you can see those DevOps mindsets being applied here. They are crucial. I'm throwing around technical terms and product names like there's no tomorrow, but that's not my point. We were trying and sometimes failing and sometimes improving over and over again until we got something to where we need it to be. All of the time, the team was learning and developing along the way. And when I say the team ditched Terraform and CloudFormation, that wasn't my decision. I asked the team for their input. What did they want to do? 
If they all wanted to continue down the terraform path, we would have done it. They had their say, we all listened, and moved forward with an agreed plan. Everyone agreed to the decision, understood why the decision was made, and worked towards a common goal. With the help of the excellent engineers in the team, we developed what I'm going to call a mono repo. One repository and a series of pipelines that was capable of delivering all of our Azure infrastructure as code. This is not something that you typically see, but having multiple repos or projects or infrastructure didn't make sense. We were responsible for it all. And the source of truth didn't need to be scattered across multiple repositories or projects. This is where we truly got continuous integration and continuous delivery for our Azure infrastructure. Finally, but it was well worth the effort. We could write ARM templates and our pipeline would test our infrastructure as code with the ARM template testing toolkit and report changes in pull requests with the what if command. That made pull requests and the associated code reviews really easy. We knew the deployment was sound based on the tests and we knew what we, it was going to change. IT change management became more of a communications process. We were delivering IT infrastructure changes, sometimes multiple times a day, with no traditional change management processes. We had also set up environments so that we could deploy to dev, staging, and prod if we needed to test our changes. We bundled in governance and management, things like policy, security, backup, and monitoring into our code. It took a little bit to set up, but it was worth it and really accelerated our deployments moving forward. This is where you can see our journey really started to accelerate and many of the preceding processes and all of that work building the team started to accelerate our journey. I just want to speak a little bit about leadership. I never aimed to control the team. I aimed to guide them and unblock issues. I also made the difficult decisions when there was no good option and they couldn't decide for themselves. Other than those few things, the team were largely self-managing. I feel there was one major problem with my story though. Because the DevOps mindset was grassroots, you know, one of those bottom up approaches, we never really gathered the support above my manager. And although we were able to achieve great results for internal teams and customers, we never really got to show the full potential because we didn't get the support through the executive team. If there was one thing I would change going through this process, it would be to work harder on getting the support of the executive team and work on a top down approach to DevOps using stories like this to help explain the benefits of doing it. Definitely involve your leadership team, especially your executive team in your DevOps journey. Get them involved as soon as you can. You will want them and their support. To summarize some of my thoughts about this journey. Embracing DevOps is about culture, people, process, and the tools that enable it. Try to get executive support for your DevOps initiative and make them aware of the advantages and let them know that it will take time to get it right. But the benefits are worth the effort. You don't have to go all in on DevOps day one. It's more of a continuous process. You will likely try things and sometimes they need to be scrapped and sometimes they just need a little tweaking and you will learn from your experiences. And speaking of learning, you're going to have to learn a lot as part of this process, both informally from each other and from your work, but also formally. You also need to be able to trust each other and assume good intent. When someone gives you feedback, it's not a personal attack. Everyone is learning every day. If someone needs your help or advice, provide it. The team's success is more important than an individual's success. And lastly, be transparent and focus on getting things done. Show everyone what you're working on as a team and individually. Let people know what is holding you up. And if you get blocked, call out for help. 
All right, that's all I had to share today. Thanks for being with me, and I hope me sharing my journey will help others on their journey. And remember that DevOps is a journey, not a destination. You will have your ups and downs and failures, and your successes, but as a team, you can work together to achieve more than any one of you could alone. Thanks all, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.